morning, everyone. It's Pastor Jason. Thank you for joining me today for this morning's devotion. I'm excited that you're here. If it's something that blesses you, please remember to like and to share it with others. You know, we've been talking about experiencing God when I've had the opportunity to do this with you. Last time we said that God is always working around us. God is always moving. You see, having that attitude, having that knowledge, we can understand that we're, we should be looking for what God is doing. If he's always moving, then that means there's something that he wants us to be a part of and that we always have that option. We always have that chance to join in and to see what God's doing in the, in the world around us. Today, I want to talk about another truth, and that is this, that God takes the initiative. You know, it was God that came to us first. It was God that brought salvation to us. We didn't seek after him. You know, we see this in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. It's a uh, scripture that believers quote a lot. And verse 10 says, you know, that all have fallen short, meaning we've all fallen into sin. We've all been short of the mark that God had for our life. So that gives us the knowledge that we need to understand we need salvation. So that knowing that we're all sinners, that we've all fallen short, then we should we need Jesus in our life. We need salvation. But there's a part in verse 11 that we gloss over a lot. A uh, part that we go over quickly that sometimes we don't really see there. And it's very important. And that's this. It says that no one seeks after God. What does that mean? That means mankind is selfish. That means we're born in sin and that sin is what we will pursue if God doesn't intervene. God's always the one that has taken the initiative. You know, in Genesis, we see that when he speaks to, when Adam and Eve fall short, when Adam and Eve sin, it's God that takes the initiative in the garden. It's God that comes after them. It's God that comes to bring salvation to them after they've sinned. They weren't looking for God. They were hiding. We see Moses in the book of Exodus. When Moses sees the burning bush, he's drawn to it. And God gives him a mission for life. But, good, but Moses wasn't looking for God. Moses was running because he was a murderer. He was wanted by Egypt. We also see David. David wasn't looking for God. He was out in the field taking care of sheep. God came looking for him. And of course, we see this in a big way with Jesus. We weren't looking for God. We were all going about our sinful way. Everybody was doing their own thing. And then Jesus came. Jesus came so that he would die on a cross and bring us redemption. God took the initiative. We see this a lot in our own life, and we see the importance this is for our relationship with God. Let me ask you something. Can you say that you love God? No, I mean, can you say that you truly love God? It's easy to say, I obey God. I, love, I, I know God's rules. I know what he's told me to do. I know the calling on my life. So I obey God. I do what he tells me to do. It's easy to say, I worship God. I show up, I sing, I raise my hands. I do what I'm supposed to do during worship. It's easy to say I serve God. You know, we can say that we help others. We do things for other people and we do things to help this world be a better place. I can even say that I fear God. All those things come much easier than to say I love God. Why? Because love requires that give and take relationship. Love requires that personal investment in one another. Love requires that you receive that initiative that God has taken first and that you give back to him in a loving relationship, one-on-one, -on -one, where you know one another. You see, love requires that soul, emotional, spiritual investment in one another. You see, love is the one thing God wants. He's the one thing, it's the one thing he wants from you. It's the one thing he wants from me. It is vital to relationship. So I encourage you to remember today, as you go about your day, as you're spending time in your quiet time, even as you're praying to God, remember that he took the initiative because he loves you. He loved us first. He took the initiative. As Jesus said, he left the 99 to go after the one. He made the start. He made the first move. It's our job to respond. When you get that chance today, respond. I promise you, you won't regret it. God bless you. Have an awesome day.